So this is why I came here. This is the road toad. I came all the way across to Wisconsin just to see this trailer, just to show it to you. Get this right, okay. Hey guys, it's Drew, and this is the lightest, most affordable teardrop trailer on the market. If you know anything about camper trailers, you know that their number one enemy is water. Unlike traditional wood-built trailers, the Road Toad Teardrop is a composite-built trailer that's essentially impervious to water, meaning a leak of any size isn't going to put your trailer in jeopardy or require immediate repairs. So let's get right into this walkthrough, and as usual, stick around because I'll be sharing three things I like about this trailer and the three things I think can be improved. This is our newest product, which is the Road Toad. Uh, we have it as a separate product line from the camp in because it truly is a, a different trailer. Uh, the whole philosophy behind it is different where the camp in is high end, high features, all the bells and whistles. This is more of a simplistic, a uh, minimalistic approach to a teardrop. Uh, we originally looked at teardrops and the appeal of a teardrop is it's lightweight and it's low cost. And the problem with the camp in is it goes the other extreme. And we looked at it and we, we went out and we looked at all of the, the companies that were making lightweight, small, in, inexpensive teardrops. And most of them were not really well built. They were uh, unfinished wood. They were, you know, they fell apart, they leaked. And we said, okay, is it possible to make an inexpensive lightweight trailer? And when we looked at that, the road toad was result. Uh, we came out, we found a material that had never been used before in a teardrop, which is a composite. It is a, a corrugated plastic core with an aluminum skin inside and out. So the sidewall on this trailer is only 3 eighths of an inch thick or 10 millimeters thick, but it, it has the same rigidity as a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. Um, that allowed us to make it very lightweight. So to give you a point of reference, the sidewall, the entire sidewall on this trailer weighs the same as just the skin on the camp in. So that makes it, that's where we get a lot of the savings. Um, we've had some options. So this one has, uh, it has the front storage box. It has the diamond plate front uh, for stone damage. It has the, the Stargazer front windows and also the spare tire. Uh, we offer different size couplers, uh, so you can match if you have other trailers with a two inch or an inch and seven eighths coupler, we can match the size for you. So the sidewalls are all the flat surfaces that you see are made out of that, that corrugated core with the aluminum skin. The curved surfaces like the hatch and the roof are made out of a thinner material that has a solid core. It still has, I don't know if you can get a close up here, you can see it still has the, the plastic core and the aluminum skin inside and out, uh, but of course it's much thinner. And we actually run this material through a roller that allows it to get this curved shape. Then when we put it together, the primary thing that holds the, the trailer together is the trim. The trim is a custom extrusion that, uh, that locks onto the roof skin and it locks into the sidewall and is sealed into the two. It, so it makes for a continuous seal there, but it also reduces the amount of labor required to build it. It also re reduces um, the structural components required and still ends up with a very strong trailer. So th this is the abode model. The abode model has a galley built into it, um, some storage underneath the countertop, and then there's some cabinets on the inside. Our other model that we offer is, we call the totes. And the totes is, from the outside, it looks like the same exact trailer. But when you open the hatch in the rear, this partition, the countertop, and this lower partition are all gone, and it's basically a, a fully open cargo trailer. Uh, that way, you know, you can, you can throw your mountain bikes in there, you can haul your band equipment in there, and if you want to, you can sleep in it. Uh, also, we get customers that want to customize their trailer, maybe make their galley a little bit different, 
So they buy the totes model and then they, they fabricate their own uh, galley area that will meet their needs uh, better. You know, then this hatch just closes down and... I closed that hatch yesterday on uh, Lynn's camper. It felt like air, it's like a feather. Yeah. What, what do you oh, think that hatch weighs? Uh, the full hatch off the trailer is probably less than 20 pounds. Yeah, so this whole trailer is very light. Uh, this is our heavy model of the, the road toad and it weighs 470 pounds. And it has a gross weight of 1,000, so you can pull it with a smaller car that only has a 1,000 pound towing rating. Um, and as you can see, this, this is, you know, there's, there's not a lot there, and I'm not a bodybuilder, obviously. That's, that's never been done on the channel. We've lifted a tongue. And I'm lifting the heavy end. <laughs> you said this was the heavy. This is the heavy one. So what is the other one coming in at? Uh, it's just over 400. And then this one is always in this configuration. I can't remove this wall to haul Correct. cargo. Correct, correct. Where yeah. the tote, I have the ability to make it a camper and then right. switch around the next day and it's hauling right. my... Yes. Now the one thing um, that we recommend our customers do, because this material has that thin aluminum skin and it's a painted surface, if you took a cooler that had some grit on the bottom of it and you loaded it up here and it bounced down the road, it might scuff this surface. So what we recommend customers do is customize their trailer. This is just a vinyl flooring uh, peel and stick. You can lay these out and that, that gives it a nice protected coating, but it also allows the customer to customize and do any pattern they want. You can get this to look like marble or wood or, or uh, Italian tile or whatever, but it allows you to kind of customize it and make it your own. You know, we've got a couple lights in here. This one is actually configured to work with the, the battery packs, like the, the Go Zero or the, the Zach, uh, Jackery, um, where you basically plug this into your Jackery and that provides all the DC for the, the trailer. You can plug this into the AC of your Jackery and provide the AC for the trailer. So here you see we've got a DC port, uh, USB ports, and 120 volt AC ports. There's also a voltmeter and an amp meter that monitor the usage of the power in the trailer. And then there's also a, over here, you got a shore power connector that you bring your extension cord to, and that comes through the trailer so that you don't have to close a cord in the door or the hatch. With the weight of this, I'm assuming there's no spare tire on it. It has a spare on the front. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, a couple options. The standard one comes with a roof vent, but you can upgrade it to a powered fan. And then we also have a, a couple different fans that you can install in it. So inside the, the road toad, we have a very basic interior also. Uh, we actually carpet the ceiling to help with minimizing condensation. And then there's uh, some very basic cabinetry in there. Uh, we found that the, even though the cabinetry doesn't have doors, the soft goods, you know, clothing and, and uh, towels and such that you put in there stay put. Uh, and for a lot of customers, customize it by putting some little uh, double stick hooks, similar to like the command hooks on the face. And then they put a little cargo net over the opening if they want to help retain things. But you can see it's a very uh, basic interior, uh, leads a lot for customization for the customer, uh, but it also gives you a nice dry place to, to stay. Uh, when we had originally designed this trailer because of the material that we used, the material we use is very lightweight um, and we were concerned that it would not hold up to the abuse that a teardrop trailer requires. So when I built the first prototype, I actually left it attached to the rear of my car for a year, driving to and from work, and I've got a, about a 25 mile commute each way. And I would take the back roads, go down the washboardy gravel, I would go through the, find all the mud puddles I could splash through, try to bounce it off railroad tracks, and pretty much abuse it as much as possible, uh, just to see what would be the first thing to break and it turns out that the first thing that broke was the axle, which was only rated at 1,000 pounds. 
So we now use a 2,000 pound axle, but just have the uh, springs adjusted for the 1,000 pound gross weight of the trailer. That's it. That was it. Just an axle issue. Yeah. Um, later, that, that prototype, I gave it to my daughter and she continued to use it. She used it to move twice, so she loaded all of her possessions in there. And one time she did grossly overload it, and she actually did break the tongue of it too, um, because she did overload it. And we then reinforced the, we actually beefed up the frame and or made the tongue about twice as strong as it was in that original one, just so even if people overload it, we don't have a problem there. Obviously this one has some options. We've got the front windows, we've got the front storage box, the spare tire, the diamond plate front. Uh, but in addition to that, we, could add, we have a roof rack uh, option that puts a set of Yakima racks on it. Uh, then of course you can put whatever you want on that. We also have a solar option where we put two solar panels on the roof. Uh, that allows you to run off grid without electric hookups. Um, this trailer is configured to work with a, like a power pack. In the rear, we can actually add in a battery built in with a charger. So if you want a turnkey system, we can fully configure it so that it's ready to go off grid uh, if you have the solar option. And of course, once it has the battery and the charger in there, anytime you plug into shore power, you're recharging the, the battery. Let's get right into those three things I like. Number one, the obvious one is weight, but how does it compare to other trailers on the market? Well, let's compare it to my favorite Beanstalk teardrop from Bean Trailers. That trailer dry, now mind you, it had quite a few add-ons that made it weigh somewhere in the 1800 pound range. Even without those add-ons, it's still 1600 pounds. The road towed trailer comes in at 400 pounds. That literally means you can stack four road toads on top of each other and still weigh in at one base model bean composite trailer. Even the smallest four by eight teardrop trailers on the market with no bells and whistles usually comes in at about 600 to 800 pounds. Number two, composite. You know, as usual, I'm going to sing praises to composite materials. This is really what caught my eye initially about this trailer. It wasn't the weight as much as it was its ability to handle water exposure. Remember in all my Bean trailer videos, I often mentioned that I wish Bean made a pared down model that was lighter and more affordable. Well, that's where the road toad fits in. Now, is this a one piece fiberglass shell like the Bean trailer? No. But let's be honest with ourselves. One piece is great, but let's say at some point five years down the road, this trailer that's not one piece develops a leak because it does have sidewalls and a roof with connecting points like a traditionally built wood teardrop. What is that water going to do to the materials used? You may get a puddle, right? You may get some mold if you don't find the leak immediately. But in terms of damage that will impact your trailer in the long run, that really wouldn't be much of an issue. Number three, the price. Now I know all three of these seem obvious, but together they make one of the, if not the best argument for why this is the most incredible teardrop on the market. Not only is this trailer light enough to tow by any vehicle, essentially impervious to water, and costs less than almost every teardrop trailer on the market, this trailer company isn't new to the teardrop game, meaning this isn't coming out from some new pop-up company. This trailer is made by Camp In. Camp in, that name should ring a bell. Not only are they one of the leaders in terms of quality and sales in the industry, they have been around for over 20 years. I don't think any teardrop company currently in the market has been around for that long. In terms of years of experience designing, repairing, and selling teardrops, this company reigns supreme. And again, all that wrapped up in the lowest price and weight on the market. But it can't all be roses, right? Does this trailer have any issues? Well, here are the three things I would improve on this trailer if I had the chance. Number one, the hatch latching system. This is a problem I've come to find plagues probably all composite built trailers. Even my experience with bean trailers has led me to believe composite galley doors are just difficult to latch properly. And I think this has to do with the lightweight nature of the doors. Being these doors are half the weight of a typical galley door, they just don't have the umph to properly close. Now mind you, they do always close, but they do take a few seconds to manipulate the position of it basically to ensure it latches properly. 
On the bean, sometimes you just have to give it a bump with your hip. On this trailer, you can see right here, it just needs a bit of jiggling. Not a big issue, but something I believe they can alleviate if they put their minds to it. Number two, I would like to see some sort of shelving system or drawers for the abode model. The counter for food prep that they have integrated into the galley is nice, but there's a reason why 99% of us teardrop owners either have storage cabinets or drawers in our galley kitchens. I consider these to be essential for teardrop owners. I understand the philosophy behind this build and why they want to keep it simple. This is not only for weight, but also for owner customization. I get that but I still think it would be nice to have an upgrade option with a bit more of a standard style galley with cabinets. Number three is a very simple upgrade. With those interior open cabinets, I think having cargo nets as an upgrade option from the factory would just be a nice touch. I think they would look cleaner than an aftermarket install and they would add some functionality for the folks who need it. There's two videos you need to watch. This video on the left explains why fiberglass and composite trailers may be better for you than traditionally built teardrops. And the video on the right is a walkthrough of the current or one of the current lightest teardrop trailers on the market. Notice I didn't say most affordable. The base model of this trailer comes in at only 389 pounds. Now, although not as affordable as the road toad, it still comes in much lower than most trailers on the market. As usual, stay safe on the road and we will see you in the next episode.